Okay, so let's have a look at our project for this week. I've got a couple of photos here that I took down uh, in the southern end of the Grampians, and you probably know if you followed my Learn to Paint TV for a while now that I love that part of the Grampians in Victoria. And uh, so I took a couple of photos here. This is a, I like this scene because it tells a story. And I thought today we'd do a painting, um, which is a, an intimate view of a little farmhouse with, um, you know, day-to-day -day activity in life, like somebody hanging out the washing um, in the foreground here and maybe some kids playing, you know, something like that. So there's a story element to it. Okay, let's start off with step one of the more method of painting. And you're probably familiar that the more method of painting is a, a way of breaking down the painting process into three simple steps using three colors and three brushes. And that just makes it easier when you're learning to paint, um, you know, to follow along and to be able to actually produce a great looking painting, even if you're an absolute beginner. And uh, it's been proven to work now with more than 20,000 students having gone through our courses. So our very first step in the more method is our drawing. And what we focus in on in the drawing step is getting in big shapes, getting the right shapes in the right place. So what I'm doing, I'm just mixing ultramarine blue and the permanent crimson, or you could use alizarin crimson, or you could use magenta. And basically it's a cool transparent red is what you want, and then ultramarine blue. And uh, just mix it up in a little puddle there. This little touch of water in there. It's probably the only time I'll use water uh, in my painting. Because um, generally the way we use acrylics is more like an oil paint. So you don't need to be using water. Now what I'll do, I'll run a horizon line in fairly low. Um, that's around about a quarter of the way up there. And then our first step is, as I said, to, pl to, to place the big objects. So uh, I want... That's about the halfway mark. So I want the farmhouse to sit in this um, section of it here. So we'll sit it somewhere like so. Now this has got an unusual little arrangement with the roof. It's a little triangle there. Okay. So it's a triangle and a, and a little box at the front. Okay. And this is what I meant by identifying big shapes. Then there's another triangle that sits in somewhere there and then there's the roof line of that one runs in behind it there okay and that's catching a nice bit of sun in there at the moment well not at the moment but in the photo okay and then the roof line here extends out to there and it's then it's lost behind uh some bushes which conveniently um we'll, we'll just pop that in so that roof line runs to about there there's that part there. So this is probably an extension at some stage, I would suggest. And then it's quite dark shadow in amongst there. Okay, something like that. And we might place a door just there, even though it's not in the picture. Um, that's perfectly fine. We can make a few little adjustments. Now, the mountain range is sitting, and as I said, this is going to really be in the distance. This is uh, the mountain range at Dunkeld in the southern part of the Grampians. They're just a, a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. One of my favorite places to go visiting and uh, has been the source of many good subjects from around the Grampians for me. Okay, so we'll pop that there. And then we'll pop a row of little trees and... I have to get them 100% accurate to what's in the in the photo. You now, like I might just make a little pine tree or poplar tree there, just for a bit of interest. Now, I think that's probably not a bad little composition. So, I started out talking about big shapes. I think if you treat this cottage here, this farmhouse, as one big shape, you got this tree here is another big shape treat all of these trees here as a big shape, right? It's just one big shape we need to block in. We've got the mountains a big shape, and then we've got the foreground as a big shape. If you start thinking about it in just simplistic terms like that, then painting can become uh, a lot easier. I'm just thinking maybe it needs a little path. Okay, welcome to step two now, the more method of painting. Uh, we are now gonna do the blocking. We're, and what that means is we've got these big shapes established on our canvas. What we need to do now is get down uh, color to block in those big shapes. 
and start to establish a values pattern um, with this. So our first thing is we'll start off with our dark. So this is our sort of our foreground mid-tier, mid-range mid in through here. Um, so our darkest darks are going to be sitting around the farmhouse and then they'll get a little bit lighter up into the back and then the mountain range is going to be you know obviously a fair bit lighter than that so in terms of getting our darkest dark we'll start off with a big chunk of the uh, ultramarine blue some of the permanent crimson a little pinhead of the yellow ochre and when you mix those three together you get a, a reasonably um, good dark and you can then push the dark warmer or cooler as we go. So let us just run this main bush in here. Okay. And you know, I'm not too worried about edges at this stage because I can refine the edges with um, a later, later step, you know, when we do highlights and so on. So at the moment, I just want to get the overall shape of the dark in there and I'll get just a little touch cooler by adding a touch blue in there and I'll just work in this shadow here and again we'll we will shape this up when we paint in the foreground in a bit more work later okay kind of a little bit of a tree shape there okay now we said there's a bit of a dark in the uh, building there. So again, I'll go cooler because this won't be getting any light in here. Um, and it's sort of like under a veranda. So it's going to be a cooler dark rather than a warm dark. Okay. And we'll just pop that in there. Maybe pop in an indication for that door. Now, we don't want these trees here or that one to be as quite as dark as that. So what we'll do is I'll mix up the same colors in there. Okay. I won't put the yellow in this time, but I'll just take a little tiny little bit of white, not much because the white will overpower it pretty quickly. Okay. And we'll just work it back a little and we'll just make it slightly bluer, which makes it slightly cooler. Now, probably a little bit too subtle there. So I'll just, for the purpose of demonstration, I'll push it a little bit more. So a bit lighter and a bit cooler in tone. That's it, right there. Okay, now if you compare that to that, this one here is going to look like it's further away. Okay, the warmer colors will come forward. If you've done my uh, color mixing course, then you'll know. Warmer colors come forward, cooler colors go back. So therefore, to create you know aerial perspective in a painting, you apply those, uh, those principles. Okay, now we need to go a step lighter in what we're doing. Okay, we've got a little bit of red in there. Let's just test that. Is that so it's bluer, but it's probably not quite light enough. I'll get a little bit more white in there. Okay. And we'll just um, pop that in. Again, we can shape this up with the sky and highlights and so on. I think I added a little bit of yellow just to make it a slightly different feel to that pinky, you know, the, the purpley version of it, which is what I've got in here. Because what I want that to do is to separate from that tree shadow color, which it has. So um, that's good. And I'm just going to block this mountain in. And we're not going to put any details at all into this today. It's purely just background information it's not what we're painting okay. one good trick with uh, a distant mountain range like this is as you get down towards the bottom I'll just continue it across through to there as you get down to the lower part of this mountain just start to lighten it off slightly so there's my mix there. I'll just take just a little bit more white and I'll lighten it off, okay, as we get down to the lower part of that mountain. Okay. 
Now, just take a little bit of care around the roof line. We're painting the negative shape there. Now, for this field, we are going to use an earthy tone. It's already fairly, uh, it's burnt earth and there's very little grass. So that's going to work perfectly for us. So we'll take our permanent crimson and yellow ochre. Okay, we'll just mix that up. And I'll get just a little pinhead of white in there for the moment. And let's just work that in. Keeping in mind this is just the blocking stage. And we will uh, we will be putting highlights and details over the top of this. Little bit of variety in the tone won't hurt just to keep it interesting especially as you get into the foreground because uh you know the foreground is where you put more details than what you would in the background so mixing it up a little and having a bit of variety is always a good idea Okay, welcome back now to uh, step three of the more method of painting. Let this dry off quite nicely and it's looking uh, looking quite good. Quite happy with the way it's going. So now we'll do step three, which is all about our highlights, details and finishing touches. And really what we've got to do is get this center of interest brought into focus and, and get uh, detail work into there. Then, you know, highlights around these trees and, and a bit of foreground interest. And that's pretty much all we need to do. We might put a little bit of interest in the uh, in the mountain at the back, but we'll see as we progress through the painting. So the first thing we're going to do is the front of these um, little roofs here. We'll get the bit of colour in for those. On my palette, I've got ultramarine blue, uh, alizarin crimson or permanent crimson, yellow ochre and titanium white. So... I'll start up mixing a olivey green for that roof color. Something like that, and I'll just lighten it off. Push it slightly to the yellow side there. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, and then we'll come in here and just Pop that in. Okay, same down through there. And then these two sections in here are a fair bit lighter, so I'll add more white and I'll add a little bit more yellow just to warm it up. I don't want it to be too pale and sickly, so a little bit of yellow there will give it the feel of a bit of sunlight catching on it. Through there like so. Good. Now the front of these is going to be, it's a white but in shadow. So we'll take white, 
a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. We'll mix those together. And to tone along those lines. It's a little bit of that green in there as well from the roof, which is fine. And so it's gone a bluey gray, which is probably perfect. Run that down to there. Now I've added in a little bit of a door. It doesn't exist in the photo, but um, I thought it would just make that wall a little bit more interesting. Okay. Now we're coming down to this next layer here. I'm going to just punch up the red and the yellow a little. Okay. And that's a little bit too orangey, so just a touch more blue back into that. And let's just test and see how that looks. Not bad. I don't think I'll do all of it in that tone though. I'll pick up some of that green and just add some of that in there. Okay, I'll go a little bit greener, I think, with this one. So these are, you know, muted earthy foliage colours. I don't want the ones, you know, I don't want these ones to be too bright, put it that way. So we're just using them just to shape up some of the highlights here. Okay, now while all that's settling down, let us get in greens in here for our grasses. We'll go a little bit brighter. So we'll take plenty of that cad yellow light there. We'll get a little bit of white into it and touch of the yellow ochre just to keep it on the earthier side okay and i'm going to just run that in through there and notice i'm just dragging the brush across and letting the tooth of the canvas um, pull that paint off okay paint that through into there and this is where our underpainting becomes, um, you know, important. Mixing up some variety of tones and variety of brush strokes. Okay, and now we come forward again and we start to then add a little bit more of that cad yellow into the mix. We'll just take a smaller brush now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this shadow tone here, which we've already mixed up. I'm going to use that and place it there like so. And then I'm going to take some pure white. Just drag that across the top of that shadow. Okay. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the red that's a little t-shirt okay then take a script liner brush here a little touch of water and 
I shall run it through the white paint. Okay, and then I'm just going to run that through like so. So a little bit of a clothesline happening there. And I'll get a bit of blue and white. Maybe make a jumper. Or a pair of jeans. Get off the clothesline there. I can use that same shadow tone there for a little bit of rising smoke and I think it's always a good idea to add in little things like smoke or a light in the window or the clothesline because it gives an indication that there's um that there's life you know that there's things happening in the And a good little trick is when you're doing little fence posts and things like that, put your, where you've got a light background, put a dark. Where you've got dark background, just put a little light. And you don't want it to be perfectly white and it's too bright. So I'll take a grey version of it. But you can then run that against the shadows. Like that. And uh, it makes it stand out and you can see it a lot easier. Well, there you go, folks. At our homestead, uh, southern part of uh, the Grampians in a town called Dunkeld in um, Western Victoria um, in Australia. And uh, it's a nice little farm setting intimate little view and you know it's got a little bit of signs of life with the clothesline and the smoke and and so on and uh, a pretty simple beginner sort of basic um, painting to have a go at so it's one i'd highly encourage everyone to uh to play around with add your own little touches and details in the foreground and so on um but yeah it's d definitely one to you know follow through the process and learn the basic steps to producing a painting and um, I think you'll enjoy this one. So uh, have a go at it and let me know how you go. And uh, make sure you check out all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV by going to www.learntopaint.tv and also take our free course at Learn to Paint Academy. So that's www.learntopaint.academy um, and you can take a free course there. So hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now and happy painting.